start the application overview, let us start with an oscillator. And in this particular example, we'll be using an oscillator which was implemented using commercially available low noise amplifier and using the support transducer based uh, Lame and resonant, I'm sorry, Lame and wine glass mode as the resonant tags. As you can see over here, we have improvised the resonator performance by using the material and the structural engineering, which was explained in the earlier section. An optimized oscillation system in this particular work was realized using the LNA, as I mentioned. So carefully positioning the passive components such as the couplers and the attenuators, an ideal operation point for the resonator was attained. So using the scheme, wine glass and Lame mod resonator based high performance oscillators with extremely low phase noise has been attained. As you can see over here, we have attained a phase noise of minus 133.6 and minus 132.7 at one kilohertz offset and minus 153.7 and minus 150.4 dBc per hertz at one megahertz offset. So when these values were down converted to 13 megahertz as you can see over here the gsm communication spectrum requirements are satisfied so this goes on to show the potential that support transducer topology holds to attain low phase noise oscillators for frequency reference applications now when we look into the industry Cytan's capacitive mems oscillators is a large success story and recently texas instruments have made a breakthrough in this area by using peso electric bulk acoustic wave resonator as a building block for its oscillator so ti's technology is supported by world's first crystal that's my MCU unit. So it enables high reliability, high performance, high accuracy in timing, and it does not uh, come at a cost of power latency or frequency stability. Now let's move over to the next applications of resonance systems, which are filters. So there are two kinds of filters we'll be discussing. One is the channel select filter, where the filtering bandwidth is extremely narrow, and that is desirable for certain applications. Whereas for applications such as 5G and so on, wide bandwidth filters are required in certain cases. So let us start with channel select filters, which are mainly pursued for wireless body area network applications. In this particular filter example that I'm showing, there are two resonant modes which are used and like this normal ways where a monotonous mode using a mechanical coupler is used to change, is used, used to create a frequency shift okay, between so that there are two peaks. But here what they did is that they used two different modes, namely the length extension and the in plane shear mode to generate an extremely narrow bandwidth channel select filter. As you can see over here, this is the coupler. Changing the length of the coupler, the bandwidth of the filter can be controlled. And this is the row and the terminated filter response. As we can see from this particular figure that a very low percentage bandwidth of 0.18 percentage, which corresponds to a bandwidth of 63 kilohertz for a center frequency of 34.8 megahertz. So this is the case where they use two different distinct resonant modes mechanically coupled to generate a narrow bandwidth filter. Support transducer topology was also investigated as to how can we use a single resonator itself to realize a filter. So what we did is that we played around with the drive and send scheme. And also we found that changing the length of this particular mechanical coupler, we were able to change the bandwidth of the filter. So how small or how narrow bandwidth could be attained? So this is the unterminated and the terminated filter response. So you can see that we have a very good stop band rejection and a percentage bandwidth of 0.087 percentage, which corresponds to a bandwidth of 18 kilohertz for a center frequency of 20.6 megahertz was attained. So this is one of the record low bandwidths attained on any TPOS platform. So this uh, slide also confirms and also assures the immense application potential of support transducer topology. In the previous slide, we saw how a high Q resonator could easily satisfy the GSM communication spectrum requirements in terms of phase noise. And here we see a channel select filter. 
But however, let us look into the wide bandwidth filter. So this is basically a bulk acoustic wave resonator, mainly operating as an F bar. We have discussed it about we have discussed about F bar in length previously, where the E three three coefficient is used. Hence, there is a very good wide bandwidth because of the high electromechanical coupling coefficient and also the transduction efficiency is quite high leading to very low insertion loss. So for, for the RF communication, it is quite important that the pass band generally passes a certain insertion loss requirement and also there is a certain attenuation outside the pass band. And there are several engineering techniques such as modified lattice, lattice, and ladder schemes, wherein, as you can see, that different architectures have different shape factors, different bandwidths. So depending on what is the application that you're targeting, what is the insertion loss, what is the shape factor, what is the bandwidth of the information that you require, different lattice structures or different filter combinations. So it's basically how you couple different filter elements, right? The series and the parallel resonators. So depending on the applications, several architectures can be chosen. Filter is one of the biggest commercial area for MEMS. As you can see that there are several companies which are actively, actively participating, our go being one of the oldest contenders of this particular field. Then you have companies such as Acoustics, Skyworks, Murata, Qualcomm, which just entered the business in this particular area of uh, filters in the year of 2019. So this goes on to show the billion dollar industry that is being reliant on a piezo MEMS filter technology. So let us briefly go over the other applications, um, starting with the mass sensor. So this is basically a TPOS MEMS oscillator based uh, mass sensor where we use a PZT as the piezoelectric material. The resonator is designed to operate at length extension mode with a resonant frequency of 5.12 megahertz, yes, 5.12 megahertz. And the mass resolution of this particular setup is about 0.54 picogram with a sensitivity of 4.96 hertz per picogram, as you see over here. So this study was being then advanced where in a real-time PM2.5 sensor module was developed, as you can see over here, where they use a micro pump, a TPOS resonator, a two-stage aerosol impactor, and a micro pump to show that the potential of the particular MEMS resonator, which has not, which doesn't have a very high Q, probably around 300 or slightly about 300 to serve as a PM2.5 sensor. So this is one yet another application of TPOS technology, which can find a great market given the environmental pollution monitoring domain. Next, let us have a look at ultrasonic transducer. So PMUDS, uh, as you see over here, has found a strong footing in a wide spectrum of applications, such as range finding, gen gesture sensing, imaging, underwater application, social distance monitoring, and so on. So let us look into one particular work. So this particular work uses PMUD and um, it is bonded at a wafer level with CMOS circuitry. So why it is done that is because the signal processing electronics allows to produce a pulse echo. Uh, so that is entirely the pulse echo ultrasonic imager is entirely enabled on a single chip. So they demonstrated the first MEMS ultrasonic fingerprint sensor capable of imaging epidermis and subsurfaces of the human finger. So this is a very strong advancement in terms of imaging as well. So this uh, next example is one of the widely used applications uh, in the automotive industry or in the consumer electronics is the accelerometers. Then we have a gyroscope and magnetometer. So just dwelling a little bit more into the magnetometer design, so this is a corner bending, uh, sorry, corner flapping square plate topology of a magnetometer, as you can see. So this work reports a sensitivity of 12,000 ppm per Tesla, which is about eight times higher than the state-of-the-art lateral LFM-based capacity output devices. And the beauty of it is that it operates in ambient pressure, non of vacuum packaging, and yet it can deliver a very high sensitivity. 
The next application is an IR sensor, which we discussed briefly earlier. So as you can see here that a thin piezoelectric plasmonic metasurface is formed on the resonant body of the NEMS resonator. And it is simultaneously tailored for both the optical and the electromechanical properties. So the authors in this particular work have experimentally demonstrated that it is possible to achieve high thermomechanical coupling between the electromagnetic and the mechanical resonances. So this is a frequency selective, sorry, the wavelength selective IR sensor. And uh, this has a very high sensitivity. So the combination of nanoplasmonic and piezoelectric resonance allows the proposed device to selectively detect long wavelength IR radiations. So the next uh, and the final application that we'll be looking into is in the audio range application. One is demonstrated by Vesper and XMEM. So this is one of the latest news just this month. XMEM, XMEM lab demonstrated the and announced the production actually of the world's first monolithic MEMS micro speaker. So they work closely with TSMC, which is one of the world's leading semiconductor foundry and the company has passed all the required um, performance and reliability qualifications. So XMEMS product is world's first monolithic MEM speaker which implements both actuation and diaphragm in silicon. So it results in unmatched level of part-to-part uh, -part consistency in frequency response and phase as well. So we can check out uh, XMEMS website where they show how it is also powered by piezoelectric. So they also have a technology which is powered by piezoelectric thin film. So this is the summary of this tutorial for IEEE Sensors 2021. So I have structured it in sections where in the first section we went over an overview of piezoelectricity. So the concept was being described, a thermodynamic analysis was drawn out to understand the piezoelectric coefficients and why certain terms are zero, why certain terms are non-zero, and did the different piezoelectric materials that are commonly used. Next on piezo MEMS resonators, we discussed with different modes. Modeling, a very brief introduction to modeling was given, quality factor enhancement techniques, and also electromechanical coupling improvement methods were shown. So these two actually gave us a lot of ideas to how to improve the figure of merit of a resonator. And so, thirdly, support transducer topology, which is one of my major research works, were described in great detail as to why we needed the support transducer topology and how it broke the barrier and now net zero stream um, modes can be excited efficiently such that we get low emotional resistance and also high quality factor and they have been shown to have exceptionally good performance as an oscillator and a filter uh, and uh, even for gyroscopes we're exploring that. And finally, a very brief application overview of different piezoelectric MEMS resonator technology applications has also been presented in this tutorial. So this actually winds up the tutorial section and thank you everybody for your attention. And should you have any questions, uh, please ask now or you can reach out to me through email. Thank you.